Okay, a warm welcome to my session on surgery clinics. Today's topic which we will discuss today is hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids is a very common cause of problems in our patients, surgical patients that we encounter. So it's of utmost importance that the students, you must know the basic principles of what hemorrhoid is, the signs and symptoms, and how you manage these patients with hemorrhoids. Now, what are hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids are swollen veins in the lower anus and rectum. They are also commonly referred to as piles, okay, which are actually blood vessels inside the anal canal, which become engorged and dilated with training and constipation. And eventually, they tend to bleed and even drop off. Okay, here this is the anal canal with the piles here. They become engorged, dilated due to frequent straining as those, and later they tend to bleed. Okay, this is a picture showing you a close up direct diagrammatic view of what hemorrhoids is. On the left here is normal venous supply or the venous uh, anatomical situation of the venus, so that's an internal venous system. And your external venous system. Okay, here on the right side it shows the venous veins have become dilated and tortuous, forming hemorrhoids or piles. And this is an internal piles, and this is an external pile. Internal piles occur inside the anal canal and are easily and not not easily visible outside. There are some fast facts on hemorrhoids. Women are more likely to get hemorrhoids while they are pregnant. The likelihood of developing hemorrhoid increases with age. So in children, we rarely get hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids occur when the veins surrounding the anus are engorged and enlarged. If left neglected, hemorrhoids can cause chronic bleeding and anemia. Sometimes medication and surgery are needed to treat hemorrhoids and its complications. What are the types of hemorrhoids that we have? First, we have the internal hemorrhoids which I mentioned just now, which originate high up in the anal canal or lower rectum. These are drained through the superior rectal vein into the portal system. External hemorrhoids originate in the anus, lower anus, and drain through the inferior rectal vein into the inferior vena cava. Between these two venous systems, there is a rich anastomosis that exists between these two and, and the middle rectal vein thus connecting the portal and systemic circulations. Okay, this slide shows you the blood supply and the venous drainage of the lower rectum and anal canal. Okay, on the left here, the arterial supply of the lower rectum and the anal canal is from three sources, from the inferior mesenteric artery through the superior rectal artery, the middle rectal artery and the inferior rectal artery both from the internal ilia artery. The, these arteries supply the lower rectum and the anal canal, including the anal cushions that form the internal hemorrhoids in this area. Okay. Now over to the venous side, the lower rectum and the anal canal is drained by two, uh, two from two directions. Huh? One is from into the portal system, the inferior mesenteric vein, through the superior mesenteric uh, vein here. And then the lower part is drained by the somatic vessels, the, the middle and inferior rectal veins, which drain into the internal ilia and the IVC, which belongs to the systemic circulation. Therefore, there is both the portal and systemic venous uh, drainage of the anal canal and the rectum. 
and there is free anastomosis between these two venous systems. And in normal individuals, it is not may not be significant, but in patients with portal hypertension, this and the venous veins can become dilated, and very and anal varices can form, which can cause troublesome bleeding. It must be remembered that the anal varices and hemorrhoidal bleeding are totally different entities. Eh? Anal varices from this portal systemic circulation here and the anal varices, but the hemorrhoids are from the internal hemorrhoid plexus here. Now, we come to external hemorrhoids. These are hemorrhoids under the skin around the anus. And signs of these symptoms of this external hemorrhoids include itching or irritation in the anal region, pain or discomfort around the anal region, swelling around the anus, and bleeding. Internal hemorrhoids, on the other hand, lie inside the rectum, so you can't really see or feel them, and they rarely cause discomfort. But straining or irritation when passing stool can cause painless bleeding during bowel movements. Okay? This is the most common symptom of internal hemorrhoids. Painless bleeding during bowel habits and classically after defecation. This can also lead to hemorrhoid prolapse. Okay? And this results in pain and irritation in the anorectal region. The third category we can include is the thrombose piles or the thrombose hemorrhoids. Okay, when the blood in the external hemorrhoid veins clot, then that is known as thrombus, and such a hemorrhoid is known as thrombose hemorrhoids. This usually causes severe pain in the anal region, swelling, inflammation, and a tense lump near your anus. External thrombose hemorrhoids are usually found in the external hemorrhoids around there as a tense lump around near the anus. Okay, now what are the causes of hemorrhoids? Okay, the veins around the anus tend to stretch under pressure and may bulge or swell. Hemorrhoids can develop from the increased pressure in the lower rectum due to a number of factors huh? and this includes straining during bowel movements, sitting for long periods of time on the toilet, having chronic diarrhea or constipation. Other factors include being obese, being pregnant, having anal intercourse, eating a low fiber diet and regular heavy lifting, weight lifting. The clinical features include painless rectal bleeding. Remember, I emphasize the word painless because bleeding, classical bleeding from hemorrhoids is painless. Feeling of fullness or discomfort in the rectum. Sensation of needing to defecate. Pain in the rectum especially when there are complications of the hemorrhoids like prolapse and thrombosis or infection. Anal pain, especially from external hemorrhoids, which are thrombos, and itching feeling near the anus. Okay, internal hemorrhoids can be graded according to their severity eh? into grade one to grade four. Grade one, or first degree is when there's no prolapse, no prominent blood vessels are seen, and on examination, there's nothing much to see except on proctoscopy, you'll see prominent blood vessels in the area of the internal hemorrhoids. Grade two or second degree is when this internal hemorrhoids prolapses out on defecation, prolapse upon bearing down but reduce spontaneously. So after defecation, it return, returns to its original position. Grade 3 or third degree prolapse upon bearing down and requiring manual reduction. So the hemorrhoids prolapses 
on bearing down and after defecation it fails to return to its original position. The patient has to manually push it back which moves him easily back to its original position. So requires manual reduction. In grade 4 or the fourth degree is prolapse on defecation or on bearing down and unable to be manually reduced. Eh? And the prolapse mass remains permanently outside, fail to be reduced manually. So these are the four categories of grades of MRIs which are important as the treatment depends on these grades. Now, when you look at the hemorrhoid patient, you see the prolapse hemorrhoids here. This is the anus. You can describe them in the, in according to the face of a clock. These are the primary hemorrhoids which occur at the 11 o'clock position or the right anterior, 3 o'clock position, left lateral, and a 7 o'clock position is a right posterior. In between these prolapse primary hemorrhoids are known as the secondary hemorrhoids. Okay, so these three primary hemorrhoids correspond to the three branches of the superior rectal artery which divide, which continue to supply these three uh, structures. Okay, next we come to complications. Anemia is one of the common complications of hemorrhoids. Chronic bleeding leads to anemia. Sometimes it can also re result in acute bleeding causing hemorrhagic shock which needing emergency treatment. Okay. Prolapse and strangulated hemorrhoids. If the blood supply of the internal hemorrhoid is strangulated or cut off, the hemorrhoid becomes strangulated which causes extreme pain. Thrombose hemorrhoid, the hemorrhoid becomes thrombose and this may not be a dangerous situation but it's extremely painful and needs to be drained as soon as possible. And the last complication is infection and sepsis which lead to local abscess formation, perianal abscesses or it can cause portal pyemia. Okay? and which can lead to liver abscess, which is a very serious complication. Okay, but how do you prevent hemorrhoids? The underlying mechanism to prevent hemorrhoids, to keep hemorrhoids away, is to keep your stool soft, so that the stools pass easily. Okay, so less training, soft stools, less training, less hemorrhoids. Eat high fiber food, plenty of water, of oral fluids, consider taking fiber supplements, avoid straining at stools, go as soon as you feel the urge and not wait until you have to strain and push the stools out. Regular exercises and a healthy lifestyle and one of the important things is to avoid long periods of sitting. Especially jobs that require you to sit for long, like drivers, okay, who have to sit for hours without rest. Next, we come to the treatment of hemorrhoids. First, conservative measures. Okay, the first cons conservative measures will be diet, as I've mentioned, high fiber diet, increase a lot of fluids stool softeners and that's such as senna cord. okay we soften the stool so that there's less training at defecation if there's prolapse or thrombosis then there's local applications may be of help xylopoc ointment is a local anesthetic ointment proctocidyl ointment which is a combination of steroid hydrocord antibiotic and local anesthetic and Elma cream. This, are, this is a technocaine ointment, which is a local anesthetic. So all these local applications usually consist of a an local anesthetic, 
steroids and antibiotics these are three components okay which are used to in the manufacture of local applications for hemorrhoids especially complicated hemorrhoids then there's the either these can be used as ointment to apply locally or they can be used as suppository where you insert this bullet like uh, ointments or bullet like medication through the anus into the anal canal among them anusol is a very important and popular suppository that has been used for very long which consists of hydrocortisone acetate then the drugs used in to treat hemorrhoids is deflon okay 500 milligram this deflon increases the venous tone of the hemorrhoids so thereby decrease re 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 reducing the stasis and engorgement of the veins thereby the pressure in them this therefore decreases the uh, symptoms of pain edema and irritation apart from these conservative measures next we have is the more invasive methods of treatment among them will be the injection sclerotherapy which uses 5% phenol or 1% thrombova which is injected into the vein uh, hemorrhoids especially second degree hemorrhoids to cause them to sclerose and fibrosis thereby stopping the bleeding ligation or bending of the rubber bands also classically traditionally used for very good for second degree hemorrhoids I shall show this in the some pictures later. And a bit more serious procedure known as the EUA examination under anesthesia and Lord's procedure, which is forceful stretching of the anal canal, which reduces the intra-anal pressure, thereby improving the transit of stools, thereby the symptoms of hemorrhoids. This is usually done as a pre-operative procedure prior just before hemorrhoidectomy and the last procedure is of course hemorrhoidectomy which can be either open or stapled okay open is known as excisional hemorrhoidectomy and staple known as stapler hemorrhoidectomy in open hemorrhoidectomy these days we have the assistance of laser to do the cutting and as well as the harmonic system to cut using ultrasonic waves which help to reduce the pain of excision okay this is a summary of the various treatment for the various stages of hemorrhoids first degree high fiber diet stool softeners if bleeding uh, give injection sclerotherapy Second degree usually is for rubber bending. Second degree usually rubber bending, and also can if it is not so big the uh, hemorrhoids, you can also use injection sclerotherapy. Third degree traditionally is subjected to hemorrhoidectomy, either open or stapling. Nowadays is stapling hemorrhoidectomy. And fourth degree. Normally, it is, it is either thrombose and prolapse, so you need some form of local treatment to reduce the swelling. And this is done by the conservative treatment, which I mentioned, local applications, analgesics, steroids, antibiotics, either ointment or suppository. This will shrink the hemorrhoids in a couple of days, and then the patient is subjected to stapling hemorrhoidectomy or open hemorrhoidectomy. Okay. And this hemorrhoidectomy can be either stapled or open excisional hemorrhoidectomy. And today, the treatment of choice is stapled hemorrhoidectomy. Okay, another good treatment that is used either preoperatively for complicated hemorrhoids and continued into the postoperative period is known as the cyst bath. Okay, S I T Z cyst bath. That is sitting into a bathtub of warm water 
where you sit immersing your anorectal region into the bathtub. It is done by taking a tub and clean water. Okay, fill it up with clean water after cleaning it thoroughly so that it covers your buttocks, lower back and buttock. Add salt, preferably what we call Epsom salt, which is a salt of magnesium sulfate, which is more potent in reducing edema than normal uh, sodium chloride. Stir it until it is nicely dissolved and sits in the bath for minimum of 15 minutes. It helps in softening the hemorrhoids and reducing the pain and other symptoms associated with the complicated hemorrhoid. After that, you gently clean the wipe out the infected area. To try not to press too hard or cause some scratching, it will cause bleeding. So you do this procedure 15 minutes each time for about two or three times a day, depending on the severity of the hemorrhoid. This will help you to heal either the operated hemorrhoid or the complicated hemorrhoid faster than otherwise. Okay, These are commercially prepared uh, seat spot equipment. Okay, It comes with a basin which can nicely fit into the toilet bowl so you can comfortably sit inside. You can even have something to flush eh, at this normal cell line and flush your operated area or your thrombosed piles with normal cell line, which cleans, not only cleanses but reduces the edema and pain of the hemorrhoids. Okay, this is a summary of what used to be done. Clean the top of doing a cispark. Clean the top, add warm water, add some salt preferably Epsom salt. This helps to shrink the hemorrhoids further, reducing impact. After that, when it's done, gently clean and dry the infected area. And this is a picture showing injection sclerotherapy. Where this is a second degree hemorrhoid. Okay. 5% phenol or thrombova is taken about usually is around 3 cc 1 to 3 mils and then is injected using a syringe and needle directly into the hemorrhoids this will cause thrombosis and fibrosis of this hemorrhoid thereby not only stops its bleeding it also finally obliterates this hemorrhoids causing fibrosis this is known as this is the bending equipment. Okay, this is the second degree hemorrhoids, okay, which are pulled into this bending machine here, like gator, which carries the rubber bands. And once it is pulled into the like gator, the rubber bands are released, which strangle or catch the neck of the hemorrhoids, causing ischemic necrosis and fibrosis or this drop and uh, dropping off of these hemorrhoids. This is a clearer picture. Okay, this is the internal hemorrhoids which are here. They are pulled into the ligator and then the rubber bands are released and fired to catch the neck of the second degree hemorrhoid, causing it to get strangulated and fall off. This is an external hemorrhoid, thrombose, patient came with severe pain, unable to sit up. So this is due to thrombosis of clotting of blood vessels or veins within these hemorrhoids. So these patients not only need local applications, but most of the time you have to do a minor operation to release these clots and thereby releasing the pain as well. Okay, this is an open hemorrhoidectomy. This is the hemorrhoid that is grasped and pulled upwards. Then using a harmonic knife scalpel, laser scalpel or normal knife and scissors is cut. And then the neck of this hemorrhoid is sutured. After removing the three hemorrhoids, you get a clove leaf appearance here. Three primary piles excise. 11 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock. 
Okay, this is a picture of complete excision of amyloid at all three primary sites. Okay, this is another picture of a hemorrhoid here where you excise through the base and ligate the pedicle. The next one is called stapled hemorrhoidectomy. These days, stapled hemorrhoidectomy has become the treatment of choice or surgery of choice for hemorrhoids. Okay, in this case, it consists of a stapler, 33 mm stapler. Okay, with its head and shaft. The head is all anvil. Okay. The hemorrhoids are anchored, uh, put a purse string sutures around the hemorrhoids, and these are pulled, pulled into the hemorrhoids are pulled into the stapling equipment. The head is locked to the body, and then this is stapled and cut at the same time. Okay, so this cutting is done within the anal canal high up in the anal canal, as such, there is not much pain. The advantages of stapled hemorrhoidectomy over open hemorrhoidectomy. It is faster in recovery time, less complications, pain, bleeding and stricture. These are all very much reduced, especially pain. Okay, patients undergoing successful stapled hemorrhoidectomy are usually ready to go home the next day. They can take a normal diet and be discharged the following day. In fact, after a few hours, when they are they are much better, patients have no very little pain and they tolerate the operation much better. Also, because of that, they can be early discharged from the wards and go back to return to their job, work as soon as possible. And there's also found newer studies saying they are lesser incidence of recurrence of the hemorrhoids postoperatively. Okay, having said that, we have to know what are the hemorrhoidectomy complications. These are the four common complications that we see. The most important is pain. And the pain is usually immediate and severe, especially in open hemorrhoidectomy. So I have to highlight this pain is important. Eh? Because the pain in hemorrhoidectomy is one that uh, hinders the patient from coming for surgery. Okay, Pro or procrastinates the patient from coming for surgery for hemorrhoids. At times, the pain is delayed, which can last for a week or two. But normally, with treatment, conservative treatment, the pain reduces over the subsequent weeks and months. Second complication is bleeding which can be immediate or delayed. Delayed complications are usually due to wound breakdown, stapler giving way or infection. More important is the immediate complication where the patient can bleed due to slips, leggages. Okay, and this is usually more common in open hemorrhoidectomy and less in staple hemorrhoidectomy. Acute retention of urine due to pain in the perineal region patient go into acute retention in the post-op period. This is especially common in males and for elderly males. Okay, So special men, uh, measures are taken to treat this urinary retention which can become very painful after the operation if not attended to. Constipation and fecal impaction are another two complications that occasionally occur. Constipation is usually these patients are constipated to start with. So after the operation, due to their restriction, restrictions in their diet, they tend to become worse. And at times, this feces, heart feces, gets uh, impacted or stuck at the anal region just bef uh, above the site of operation. This can become a problem during the immediate post-op period, which can be done under short anesthesia to remove these feces. Infection and abscess formation are another complication, which I told you, 
especially abscess or portal pyemia is another important investigation, important and serious investigation uh, complication which I highlighted earlier. Anal strictures or incontinence, especially strictures are more common, especially of an open hemorrhoidectomy. As we see that if you remove three hemorrhoids, the chances of getting stricture is much higher due to healing of the anal uh, areas. Okay, I hope my short talk on this hemorrhoids today would have been of great help to you in understanding the topic better. So I see you again in another session. For more videos, lectures similar to these, please visit and subscribe to my YouTube channel at the link below. Till I see you again, thank you.